There's something very romantic about newspapers. We've been getting our news from them for centuries. But times are changing. Ink on paper may have survived the onslaught from television and radio, but can it live in the age of the computer? You know, some people, when they talk about the information superhighways and all this new technology, uh, assume that uh, traditional newspapers are going to become the roadkill uh, out there in the future. Roger Fiedler is from Boulder, Colorado, on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. He spent the last 15 years developing his vision, a newspaper of the future, one that doesn't require paper. The interactive graphic now. So when you click on the graphic it'll animate on the front page. Instead, his electronic newspaper is displayed on a tablet. In essence, just a lightweight portable computer. Touch the articles that interest you and they instantly appear. This simulation used the tricks of television, but the first real tablet is not that far away. Today, you could produce a, uh, a panel that would do everything that we want to do now, but it would probably cost something in the order of $15,000, uh, which is a bit uh, out of the consumer electronics range. Uh, what we're hoping for is a tablet that's going to be somewhere in the $1,000 range uh, initially, ultimately getting down to the range of maybe $100, $200 for the low end. These mock tablets were made to show the design engineers what's required. They weigh less than a kilogram, they have a high-resolution screen, about twice as great as today's computer screens, which will make that as easy to read as paper. Here's a pointer for touching the various articles you're interested in. And memory cards for loading information in and out of the tablet. Well, this lab was set up to look further out in the future than, uh, than most uh, facilities for newspapers, uh, where the future is next Sunday's edition. Uh, we think that the first generation of practical tablets will be probably coming out on the market about 1997, 1998. What we've done, With the arrival of the hardware imminent, Roger has been developing the software and also the look of the paper. Uh, so what you see are headlines and stories and graphics. Uh, you see the same identity of the, of the publication that you would expect to see in print. I mean, it looks like a newspaper with colour photographs that's right. at the moment. And that's our intent. What we're, we're doing is creating what we call a bridge of familiarity so that as you go from a printed edition to an electronic edition, there's nothing too scary about it. And additionally, what we've done is to add background material for that story that uh, can be there every time that story appears. Uh, on, for example, in this case, a story about Sarajevo has information about the different ethnic groups and the history of the region, geography, and the different UN peace proposals. When the newspaper becomes electronic, all sorts of possibilities emerge. The photographs can come alive. It's like having a TV within a newspaper, but you're in control. No play is gone. This ball's in the air. It might be deep enough to score a run. Batten underneath. He's got a great arm. Here comes the runner. Here comes the throw. They got him. They got him. He never got to the plate. The interesting thing about the video clips in this model is they don't require you to wait until the video clip is finished to be able to go on to something else. Uh, so if you're uh, uh, listening to a video clip of a politician, for example, and you want to turn them off... This is an American imperative, and we all need to be a part of it. And if that's not enough, you can even get the tablet to read to you in a human-sounding voice. Geneva. Adopting the language and locale of a bygone diplomatic... One of the common problems with a printed newspaper, of course, is you can't do anything else while you're reading the newspaper. You can drink some coffee, but hard to, uh, hard to fix uh, the breakfast or to uh, drive a car. Just as papers today can be picked up from newsstands, the electronic version could be downloaded into the tablet from specially set up machines, or they could be delivered down the line to your home. Uh, here in Boulder, uh, you might be able to, uh, to get a copy of the, of the Sydney newspaper that you subscribe to. Uh, or when I'm in Sydney, the, the next time, perhaps being able to get a copy of the New York Times or the, uh, the Washington Post at the, at the same time it's being published in its own city. I notice there's even advertisements there along the bottom. Oh yes, there's going to be no escape from the advertising. <laughs> uh, some people think that advertising is, is a terrible thing, but in fact, for most people, who read newspapers, uh, advertising is, uh, is just as important information as the editorial content. The difference in the electronic version is that it's interactive. You can order the products directly from the advertisements. 
we can actually uh, buy or, for example, in this case of a, of a sporting goods store, uh, we have a contest that you can enter here. All right. It entices you to, to fill out a form and send that in, and we use a wireless communication link. So, you know, I could be sitting having breakfast at the local coffee shop and uh, see this and fill it out and uh, electronically send it in uh, uh, without any delay and at a very low cost. The paper version won't disappear overnight more likely is a gradual decline. In a way, it'll be sad to see these presses wane. But on the other hand, there will be environmental benefits. Fleets of delivery trucks and enormous quantities of paper will no longer be required.